Hello everybody, how's it going? It's me, Krendor, and welcome back to Krendor Talks in front of a shitty green screen. Today, we're taking a look at the Edeneth Deepkin faction focus. I'm actually excited about this one because I have a Deepkin army that I haven't really played much. Uh, I bought it and traded with one of my friends for a bunch of stuff, and it's just kind of been sitting there because I was like, eh, I'll wait for 4th edition, and now it's here, so I'm genuinely intrigued. Uh, I know some Deepkin stuff. I've played against them a couple times, probably like four or five times. So I know about the Tides. I know about all that. But I don't like know the intricacies of the Deepkin army, if that makes sense, right? So uh, with that being said, let me hop on over here to a blank screen. Hold on. Let me bring it up. There it is. All right. The Edeneth Deepkin faction focus. Here we are. So going right to battle traits. Uh, we have the pick a friendly regiment led by an Edeneth Deepkin hero. No unit in that regiment can have already have been deployed. Set up those units in reserve, traveling the Ether Sea. They now have been deployed. And then pick a friendly Edeneth Deepkin unit that is traveling the Ether Sea to use this ability. Set up that unit on the battlefield, holy within nine of a battlefield edge and more than nine inches from all enemy units. So they can deep strike. Cool. <laughs> Uh, but here's the big one. We got Tides. The Tides of Death. So, I'm gonna bring up the old Tides here because, uh, I know, I know of the Tides, right? But I want to, like, actually compare and contrast them. Uh, I do know that I think some of these Tides actually feel a little stronger, but most of them remain kind of the same. I'm surprised they kept the Strike First one, actually. So, uh, here we are. Let me, we have Deepkin. Battle trait. Here we are, the Tides. So, in Age of Sigmar 3.0, low tide, round one. Deepkin move towards the foe, their appearance eerily refracted and distorted like an object seen through water. Friendly Deepkin units are treated as being in cover. So now, for the rest of the battle round, subtract one from hit rolls for shooting attacks that target this unit, and subtract one from hit rolls for combat attacks that target this unit if it did not use any charge abilities this turn. Um, so... I mean, that's pretty good. I mean, the the, the older rule is kind of like being in cover, which nobody used terrain rules in Age of Sigmar 3.0 or 2.0 for that matter. So maybe in the modern version, that would actually make more sense because there there is like the different terrain types and cover and everything. But I think this is much, much more uh, laid out uh, properly, right? So you're, you're already minus one to hit for shooting attacks. Boom, that's it. You're minus one to hit shooting. Great. And then... Uh, minus one to hit for combat attacks that target this unit if it did not use any charge abilities this turn. So I take it they mean um, if your unit didn't charge this turn, right? This is kind of confusing wording. So it's for combat attacks that target this unit if it did not use any charge abilities this turn. So like your unit didn't charge, right? So like say it's turn one, your opponent charges you, they're minus one to hit you. Right? It's not you charging. It's not like you charged into them and then now they're minus one to hit. I actually don't know. <laughs> That's a, it's a bit confusing on the wording. I, I I mean I guess it could go either way. I know, but that because that would make more. I don't know. Right? Am I crazy? <laughs> uh, whatever. Somebody tell me. I'm crazy. Okay, battle round two. Anyway. Uh, for the rest of the battle round, this unit can run, use a run ability and still shoot and or charge later in the turn. And the old one is, in this battle round, friendly Deepkin units can run and still shoot or charge. Oh! So now, it used to be run and shoot or charge. Now it's run and shoot and or charge. That's actually massive. That's like, ins that's, wow, that's a huge buff. So now you can run and shoot and charge. <laughs> So, I mean, being able to shoot and charge is pretty insane on top of running. So that's whatever your move is, plus your run, and then you're going to shoot because normally you can't shoot after you've ran, right? So now you can run and shoot, and on top of that, you get the charge after you've shot. Like, this is that's so much better. That's an insane buff. <laughs> okay. Then battle round three. Uh, this one is for the rest of the battle round. This unit has first strike. Okay. Uh, the old one is... In this battle round, first strike applies to friendly deep units. So yeah, it's the same. Which, very strong. Uh, being able to attack first with everything is pretty good. Uh, you you might have guessed. <laughs> uh, and then battle round four. Uh, in this bat, here's the old version. In this battle round, friendly deep kin units can retreat and still shoot or charge in the same turn. 
So now it is for the rest of the battle round. This unit can retreat and still use shoot and or charge. Again, we have the and or charge. Wow, that is so good. Just being able to retreat, shoot, and or charge. In addition, for the rest of the battle, no mortal damage is inflicted. Oh, best of the battle round, sorry. No mortal damage is inflicted to the units by retreating. So you can retreat without taking the D3 mortal wounds. So that's also very nice. This is so good. <laughs> this is so good. Now, it doesn't say that round five, you start over at low tide. Right? Unless for the fifth battle round... Oh, it just puts it up here. Okay, so it cleans it up a bit. Wow, so yeah, it's like... These are honestly better. <laughs> the fact that you can shoot and charge... Like, and then on top of that, it adds the little ignore retreat mortals that now are a thing. Like, this is... This is genuinely better than the old one. Wow. Okay. So anyway... <laughs> uh, very good. Now we have add one to hit rolls as a sub-faction. Add one to hit rolls for combat attacks with companion weapons by friendly Achillean units. That's... Pretty good, because there's a lot of companions. You got the turtle, you got the sharks, you got the eels. Like, there's a whole bunch of companions. So, I mean, just adding one to hit for all the companion weapons is pretty insane, honestly. <laughs> that's really good. Uh, it's a little boring, but, like, sometimes that's the bo most boring ones are the best ones. Uh, then we have Steed of Tides. This is a spell, Lore of the Deeps. Goes off on a six. Pick a friendly Edeneth Deepkin wizard to cast a spell. Pick a visible friendly Edeneth Deepkin unit wholly within 12 of them to be the target. Make a casting roll. Remove the target from the battlefield. Set it up again on the battlefield more than 9 inches from all enemy units. Unlimited! So you can cast this as many times as you want. That's pretty good. <laughs> Being able to just cast a 6-up teleport as many times as you want. It's pretty good. <laughs> Alright. Edeneth Deepkin looking pretty good right now. Uh, then we have the Eidolon of Mathlan. Aspect of the Sea. He's got a uh, 10-inch move, 12 health, 3-up save, 5 control. So, previously, uh, the Eidolon... Hold on, let me bring him up here just so I can look. He had 12-inch move, so he actually had a 2-inch better move previously. Uh, 12 wounds, 3-up save, and 10 bravery. So, bravery doesn't exist anymore, so whatever. <laughs> <laughs> That's gone. Uh, so his missile weapon is 12-inch range. Three attacks, threes by threes, two red and D3 damage. It used to be D3 attacks, three by three, minus two, two damage. So a little more random on the damage, but you still get your flat three attacks now instead of... So they swap the, the damage and the attacks being the D3, which... I, I mean, it's, it's all right. It's fine with me. I don't know if that's like statistically better or something, but cool. <laughs> Uh, then he's got his side trident and deep sea scepter. So previously, these were scepter attacks. They've combined them now. These are five attacks, threes by threes, one ren, d3 damage. It used to be the trident was three attacks, threes by threes, two ren, two damage. And the scepter was two attacks, threes by fours, one ren, one damage. So, I get it. I see why they did that. It's just, they kind of blended them together. And, you know, one one was threes by fours, so that's a little bit of a buff. And you get one ren instead of two, so that kind of sucks for the trident hit. But then you get the D3 damage, so maybe you spike the damage on some of them. Like, okay, that's fine. Then you get the fangs, uh, six attacks, fours by, th fours by fours, one damage. It is a companion weapon, so you'd be threes by fours in that battalion. Uh, it used to be 2D6 attacks. Oh my god, so they just averaged it out. Fours by fours, one damage. Okay. So, kind of the same, but also different. <laughs> I, I like this more, to be honest. I like the compact version. Um, he's a level 2 wizard. He's a level 2 wizard. Okay, so he's the same level of wizard. That's good. He has a 5-up ward. He still has 5-up ward. Okay, that's the same. Uh, so, add one to casting rolls for this unit. I don't believe he used to have that. He did not. So, wow, he got plus 1 to cast. That's very good. Especially... In this edition, where it seems like that's more rare. Uh, then we have the Tsunami of Terror. Pick up to three different visible enemy units within 12 to be the targets, then make a casting roll. Subtract one from save rolls for combat attacks to target those units until the start of your next turn. I believe that's the same. Uh, oh, wait. This says combat attacks, and it used to say... Made with melee weapons. So I think it's pretty much the same. 
they just changed the wording from melee weapons to combat attacks, which I think fits the modern version, right? So that's yeah, about the same. Uh, it actually goes off in an 8 now. It used to be a 7. I mean, this is pretty strong, and I guess he is plus 1 to cast, so it's kind of similar. Um, then we have the... Once per turn, any charge phase. Vengeful Waves. This is a new ability, it looks like. This unit is not charged this turn. Pick an enemy unit in combat with it to be the target. Roll a dice. On a 3-up, the target cannot use commands for the rest of the turn. So yeah, Monstrous Rampage. You roar. <laughs> but you do it in the charge phase after they charge you. Cool. But you can only do it if this guy has not charged. So he's just like sitting back chilling, right? And then if somebody charges him, you're like, I'm going to roar you. <laughs> so, I mean, that's pretty sick. Uh, and then we have Tranquility of the Abyss, which used to be friendly eating at Deepkin units, holy within 18, have a characteristic, a bravery character, characteristic, I can't talk, of 10. So that's useless now because that doesn't exist. Now, it's ignore negative modifiers to the control scores of friendly eating at Deepkin units while they are wholly within 12 of this unit. That's really good. Because <laughs> as we've seen, I think from previous uh, War Scroll stuff, like, especially like Night Haunt and stuff, there's a lot of things that lower your control score. So having this dude just sitting on a point with like a bunch of units around him protecting him and they're just all like, yeah, come on in, try to lower our control scores, idiot. Like, <laughs> that that's really strong. This thing is, wow, that is really good. I hate the holy within, but you know, I mean, that's a strong ability. So you just plant him on the, plant him on the spot. In fact, you plant him there, you just sit him there and then you're like, come on, charge me. <laughs> Charge me, do it! And then they charge you, and then, you know, you make them so they can't use commands. And then the next turn, if they're still there, you give them minus one to save, and then you beat them up. Wow, like, I like, th I like that guy a lot. This guy is really strong. Um, so then we have the Isharan Tidecaster. I don't know what this guy used to do at all. Let's see, he used to be a six, five, four, eight. So they actually made his save worse, which, I mean, that's fair enough. That ties in with the the addition. Uh, two control. His staff is three attacks. Threes by fours, one rend d3 damage. It used to be two attacks, fours by threes, one rend two damage. So, okay. And then the bite, two attacks. It used to be threes by fours. Now it's fours by fours, but you can get it to threes with the companion. Cool. Whatever. That's probably not what you're taking this guy for. He's a level one wizard. Used to be as well. Uh, he used to have a five up ward. It looks like his ward is gone. That's unfortunate for him. Uh, he's got the Master of the Ether Sea. So, previously, he used to have... If any units with this ability are part of your army, you can pick two different rituals to influence the Ether Sea during the battle instead of one. So that's probably not a thing anymore. <laughs> uh, now it is making a Sharon ritual roll of D6. Oh, I think they just, like, put it all here. That's really nice. On a 3+, plus, pick one of the following effects to apply to the start of your next turn. Okay. Friendly Deepkin units cannot be targeted by shooting attacks unless the attacking model is within 12 of them. That's pretty good. <laughs> uh, this is just, and this affects, like... Uh, does this affect everybody? Pick one of the following effects to apply until the start of your next turn. Friendly Deepkin units... Wow, it's just, that's just everybody. Oh my god, that's just board-wide? Okay, and then add one to run rolls and charge rolls for deepkin units. Okay, that's insane. <laughs> and then each time an enemy unit uses a retreat ability after the effect of that ability has been resolved, inflict D3 mortals on that unit. Okay, cool. Uh, so this is, you're taking the add one to run and charge rolls. That's insane. <laughs> that's so good. You're just, because not only are you running and shooting and charging, but now you're plus one to run, shoot, and plus one to charge. That's, wow, that's so good. I mean, you probably do the shooting one, like, early on, because then you're, nobody can shoot you unless they're within 12, and if they do, you're minus one to hit. Like, you're not getting hit. Uh, and then the next turn, you just go add one, add one to run in charge rolls. Like, wow. That's so strong. And I guess you could pick this. Maybe you've already ran in charge or anything. You pick this one towards the end when you're in combat so that if they retreat, Instead of taking D3 mortal damage, they take, you know, 2 D3 mortal damage. So you're taking 4 mortals on average instead of 2. I mean, that's pretty good. Like, this guy seems pretty good. Pretty solid support type of hero. Uh, then we got the Achillean Alapexes. 
Uh, it's just a fun thing to say. So these are the... Are these the eels? I believe these are the eel. Yes. Okay. These are the... Or no, these are the sharks. Sorry. Uh, 14 inch move is what they used to have. Down to 12 now. Uh, everything else is the same to control. So let's see what we got here. They got the Retarius Net Launchers, which used to be three attack or one attack, three by three, three damage. That's something. And then the Harpoons were four attacks, threes by threes, one run, D3 damage. And they were 24 inches and 18 inches. Now they're both 18, so that got nerfed a little bit. But they're each two attacks, threes by twos. Okay, that's strong. One run. Three flat damage. And then they have anti-monster and anti-cavalry. Uh, so this unit's armed with the barbed hooks and blades. I'll pick ferocious bite and one of the fun. So you get to pick which one you want. So you can either pick like, these are going to be anti-cavalry or anti-monster. Both of which are really good. I mean, you're doing two attacks, threes by twos, two red and three damage to either monsters or cavalry. Like, yeehaw. Uh, and then their melee attacks... Four attacks, threes by fours, one ren, one damage. Three attacks, fours by twos, two ren, two damage. Anti-monster and a companion. So you get this to three attacks, threes by twos, three ren, two damage. That's pretty spicy. Uh, it used to be... Hold on. Barbed hooks and blades were six attacks, threes by threes, one ren, one damage. And then the bite was three attacks, threes by threes, two ren, two damage. So I like this a lot more. This is like a very cool... They're like an anti-monster, anti-cavalry type of unit. Uh, I guess you can go all-out monster, or you can make them, like, shoot the cavalry, charge a monster, or, like, get in the way of a monster. Like, that's pretty neat. So, let's see. We've got Bloodthirsty Predators. Add one of the attack characters characteristic of this bite attack while it's within six inches of any damaged enemy units, or while it is within six inches of any enemy units that had models slain the same turn. Oh, so you can get up the four attacks. Uh, did the other one have that? Add one to the attack characters to ferocious bite. Uh, okay, the old one had that too, so that's the same. Uh, and then it used to have, if this unit has two or more models and coherent of each and the horizontally of... Okay, that's dumb. If an attack made with this unit's net launcher scores a hit, it cannot make pile and moves. Okay, so that's what the old one used to have. Let's see what the new one has. Any shooting phase and snare. Pick an enemy monster or cavalry unit that had any damage points allocated to it this turn by the shooting attacks to be the target. Roll a dice on a three up. A lot of three ups in this army. Until the start of your next turn, subtract one from the number of dice rolled when making charge rolls for the target to a minimum of one. That's so good. <laughs> what? That's so much better than the old one. Where it's just you can't make pile and now it's just you only get to roll, you get to roll one dice when you charge. What? Wow, that is so good. Being able to do that from 18 inches out, too, is wild. Wow, that is so good. Okay. <laughs> and they can fly on top of that. Like, you, I, I feel like you have to include at least one of these. It depends on points, obviously, but wow. That is so good. Okay. <laughs> Now we have the Achillean, I thought it said Isengard. They're taking the hobbits to Ishlayan Guard. Uh, Alright, the Ishlayan Guard. So, these used to be 14 move. They still are. Fours and fours, yep. And bravery doesn't matter, one control. Okay. So they're not good at controlling. They used to be Hellsaber. Three attacks, threes by threes, one run, one damage. Now they're three attacks, threes by fours, one run, one damage. But they do have anti-infantry one, so they get up to two run. Nice. Uh, and then Fangs and Lashing Tail used to be three attacks, threes by threes, one ren D3 damage. Now it's three attacks, fours by threes, one ren D3 damage. But if you're running the companion one, it's the same. So, let's see. It used to uh, do a bunch of stuff, which uh, it does as well. And then it had the Bivolatic Barrier. So it used to ignore modifiers to save rolls for attacks to target this unit. In addition, it has a save character of three instead of four if it charged. Now, pick an enemy unit in combat with this unit. Roll a dice. On a 3-up, subtract one from the attack characteristic of that unit's weapons for the rest of the turn. Interesting. That's actually... That's a really unique type of thing. I like that. That's actually pretty cool. And then they got a new thing called Galv Shields. This unit has a 5-up ward if they charged. Oh, okay. So now they don't ignore save roll modifiers. Now they just get a ward. 
So this is like a like a pinning type of unit, right? Where you find something you don't want to get to your other units so you can charge it first, right? And then maybe you're on turn two and you know turn three you're going to get first strike, so you just pin this thing. And you subtract one from its attack characteristic. They got the five up ward, four up save. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I think this is pretty cool. I like this this type of unit a lot compared to the old one, even. Like, I, th I think it's cool. It has a very unique um, role now, right? That seems to be a common theme they're going for. Like, this is a pinning unit. It's going to get into combat. It's going to remove one of your attack characteristics. And it's going to have a ward. It's going to be hard to kill, right? So that's pretty neat. I like that. Uh, and then a bunch of spearhead stuff, which I'm still excited for spearhead, by the way. It's just, uh, I'm, I'm not really looking at all the spearhead stuff yet until I actually know how to play it, right? Uh, and then they show us the thralls, though, which is typically the same. So six move, five save. Uh, what are the thralls currently? What's their save? Is it a five? I kind of want to see. Thralls. Six, five, one. Okay, so the same. One control. Lamarty Blades, or Landmarty Blades, sorry. Two attacks, threes by fours, one rend, one damage. It used to be threes by threes, but now they have anti-infantry rend to get the extra rend, so that's nice. And then it looks like add one to the damage characteristic of the blade for attacks that target enemy monsters. Okay, so they can kind of beat up on monsters. So I imagine they're going to have something similar in Sigmar, but we'll have to see. They might have something similar, but the same, or close. we'll see, but... Dude, I mean, Deepkin look really good. From what we've seen here, I hope the turtles are really good, because I have two turtles, and I want to run two turtles, but wow, these are... These are spicy, man. <laughs> so, uh, and then you, we got Nurgle tomorrow. Let's go. I'm ready, dude. Or, you know, later today, technically, but I'm pumped, because I play a lot of Nurgle, so... Uh, let me know what you think of the Deepkin down below. And I, I just think they look really good. So let me know what you think. Like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube stuff. And go check some of, check, check, blah, 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 check out some of my other uh, faction focuses I've done. I've done them for all my armies I care about. So anything that isn't human. <laughs> okay? Okay. See ya.